Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Today, we have a treat for you. Sean is going to be doing our famous pork criades. Um, this is another recipe that we learned when we were in New Orleans, um, one of the two cooking classes when we cooked um, over there. Um, this is great as a main dish. You can serve it over polenta. You can serve it over grits. You can serve it over rice. But the best thing I will tell you is when you have extra sauce after you've eaten all the pork, save it because it's the best on eggs in the morning. So I hope you guys enjoy and please make sure you forward any questions to us you may have. And I will see you again soon. So one of the first steps in actually making pork griots is you have to actually take the pork, which we just had pork tenderloins cut in half and then cut in half again. So you get just a basic piece of pork here and you need to pound it out because you want these nice and thin because you want them to fry up really well. So the secret that we have is you just stick it inside of a Ziploc bag that you kind of cut in half. Take your meat mallet here and just kind of pound and you don't pound straight down, you pound out so that you're breaking the, 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 so it's spreading out into the pattern that you want. And then you just flip it over. So what was something about this size now becomes something much larger. So you can see the difference in the size from the small. So nice and thin versus the other one, which is much um, fatter. So that's what you want to do is pound them out nice and thin, and then we'll move on to the next step. So the next step in preparing this is you take your third of a cup of flour and your creole, creole seasoning or your Cajun seasoning and you just want to mix it up into a bowl because what you're going to do is take the, the pork that you've now pounded out and tenderized, whatever you want to call it, and you're going to make sure you get it nice and coated because you want to make sure it's evenly coated, you've got good flour, distri flour and seasoning distribution across the pork. So it's got a good coating, but you don't want to have it like drowning in it. Just enough to have it give it a coat of flour because that's the key. So stick it in there, throw it around, make sure it gets a good even coating. Make sure all parts of it because that's where a lot of the flavor is going to get imbued is by having this coating on the pork when you fry it up. So that's the next step. All right, everybody. Hi, Sean. I'm filling in here for Danielle. Uh, Dan cooking with Danielle tonight because we are making pork griots, which is one of the things that we learned uh, to make while we were in New Orleans. So I want to do a shout out to Crescent City Cooks because that's where we learned how to make this. So shout out to them. They're awesome. If you're ever in New Orleans and want to take a cooking class, they are the people to go to. We love them. They, we think they're fabulous. So what I've got is a dish with some flour and um, seasoned with our Cajun power, Cajun seasoning. Um, this is what we always use. It's what we love. Um, and then I just took the pork cutlets, which I pounded down, and uh, I'll show you kind of a little bit of how to do that. I pounded down the cork pork cutlets. I've just tossed them in the flour so they're just very lightly coated. And then I've got a pan here with just enough oil on the bottom to um, just coat the bottom of the pan. We use really good quality olive oil, the stuff that we get from the olive press um, up in uh, Sonoma over at uh, Jacuzzi. Uh, because you want to have a really flavorful olive oil because it's all about layering flavor. So you start with the oil, make sure that's got good flavor. Then you've got the flour seasoned up with the Cajun seasoning, and then you've got the pork. So I'm just going to pop this in here to get them to start frying. And I hear a sizzle when I do that, so that's actually a really good sign. Um, so I'm going to get the three pieces of pork that I got going right now in here, just shaking the extra flour off. And while that side is cooking, I'm just taking the next pieces of pork and just tossing them into the the flour seasoned, the seasoned flour, the flour and seasoning mix. So this is the first part you want to do. And it's really important to do this um, and be patient when you're doing the pork side because you want to make sure they get nice and browned. And the other side of it is you're going to keep cooking everything in the same pan that you've got here. So you're going to keep coming down to whatever seasoning you're developing with the pork and the flour and the seasoning and the flour and the oil is going to stay in the pan and get added into the flavor that we're going to put in with the green bell peppers and the celery and the onion. So this is this is the next stuff that goes in after the pork is ready. But that's what I mean by layering flavors. You start out with quality oil, 
good, put some good seasoned stuff in, let that cook. You layer another thing in, let that cook, add some more flavoring in, let that cook. And those flavors just build off each other and you get a complex flavor to the final dish uh, just by doing things in simple little steps along the way. A little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit here, a little bit there. Uh, so it works out very well. It's easy. It's fun. Uh, it's just something to keep in mind. So got my trusty little tongs here. I'm just checking to see how the pork looks. It's not quite brown. I want to get it brown. But that is the point. You want to give it, get it to the point where it actually does look brown and it's not just kind of pale. Because the browning is what's going to help so develop more seasoning. The pork's going to have more se flavor when it gets brown. The pan, as it collects the brown flavor, like the brown starts to develop flavor inside the oil. All these things get added together. All these things grow together. All these things build on each other. Uh, so it worked out really well. We've, the pork's been fried up. I just want to kind of give you guys an idea what we're talking about. So you can see here it's got some really nice golden brown coloring on it. This is what you want to have, that good golden brown coloring like this. The nice, good golden brown coloring on your pork is good. I've got the last couple pieces in the pan finishing up. I'm just going to grab a couple of these, take them out. we got a few more still to go, but we're pretty close. Um, and there's, at the bottom of the pan, and you'll see this when I do the overhead shot, there's lots of stuff just kind of on the bottom of the pan now. Um, all the, the seasoning that was in the oil has kind of gotten all cooked into it. Uh, so there's this coating on the bottom of the pan that's just got really good flavor waiting to be released. So I'm just going to finish frying up these last two pieces of pork. That's looking good. Um, and so next up is going to be the Holy Trinity. So we've got the green pepper, we've got some um, celery, and then we've also got an onion. So green pepper and celery take a little longer to cook, so I'm going to toss those in first as soon as this last bit of pork is done. Get those going, get them cooked. They're going to soften down. Put the onions in, cook that down. Put in some more salt, some more of the Cajun seasoning, just to really add another layer of flavor. Put in more seasoning each step of the way. Consistently adds more flavor, more flavor, more flavor. It builds on itself. It keeps growing. It keeps getting better and better, which is how we like it. That's, what I, that's how I like it. I like my food to have some kind of really enjoyable flavor. Um, this it definitely has that. So I'm going to take the last bit of pork out. So they are ready to go, and I'm going to throw in the celery and the green pepper. Great, great for the bowl, by the way. All right, so we got that going on. We've got our really cool, authentic roux spoon. Um, and I'm just going to mix this around really quick before I do anything else. And it's going to start to break up all that, all that goodness that was on the bottom of the pan, and I can scrape out a little bit too, but... I don't want to get rid of it. I don't want it to go anywhere. I want it to actually get mixed in with all this other flavor. So as the celery and the green bell pepper start to loose or release some of their water, it's going to help um, clean the bottom of the pan, basically. A lot of times you'll do this in sauces with, like, red wine or something. The, the liquids that are in the vegetables is going to do that for you. Um, and then I'm going to just do a couple healthy pinches of salt to help release some of the seasoning as well, or some of the water to enhance the flavor. And every step of the way, we add a little bit more Cajun power. Because, you, you know, you don't want it too spicy, but you still want it to have the good full flavor. So get that going on in here. And so this part is the part that takes the longest of all of it. The pork took a little while just because we had a lot of pieces to fry up. Um, but this part and getting it, this cooked down properly is the part that takes the longest. Because you want it to get it really down to that point of... Um, it, it, you can't really tell that it's celery and green pepper and onion separate from each other. It's just this set of really nicely caramelized vegetables that kind of all start taking on the same look. That's when you know that you've got, you're ready to go. So I'm going to just let this go for a little bit longer. And, and I know that the green peppers have gotten a good bit of cook on them because the, the cut marks I made have started to smooth out. So it looks less really rigid chops and it just looks like, little pieces of green bell pepper, which is perfect. So I'm going to give this one more stir, scrape the bottom to pull up a little bit more just deliciousness that's gotten there. And then I'm going to throw in the onions. So in go the onions, because we love onions. And I'm going to get that broken up and thrown in there too. So now we've got, and this is all just diced. I didn't do anything fancy. You could use your, your pampered chef chopper to cut these down because it doesn't really need to have any special kind of look to it. It doesn't have to... You're, 
this isn't going to be part of the visual presentation. It's just going to get cooked into the sauce. So you could easily use that Pampered Chef chopper and just really chop this up into little pieces, and that'll help with the cooking it. It's going to cook down faster that way. Um, occasionally, I just like the feel of using a knife, so that's what I did. I just got to have some fun um, chopping this down. But you don't need to do it. I, I would just use the food chopper from Pampered Chef. Usually, it's much easier. Uh, so I'm going to let this cook down, and I will come back after this is cooked down some to kind of show you uh, what I'm talking about and what it starts to look like when I say it's it kind of become that almost indiscernible collection of deliciousness. But this has gotten really dark and brown, and, like, you can still kind of tell there's onions, and stuff, but you really can't. There's no crunch to it anymore, because when you finally bite into it after everything's put together, you want to know there was sweet pepper, and you want to know there was onion, and you want to know there was celery, but you're not, like, feeling the crunch of those. So you want this all cooked down nice and dark like I have. And this is when we're going to start adding in the rest of the layers of flavor that go into the sauce. And you can see that we're using a roux spoon, and this is an authentic roux spoon from um, New Orleans. And it's, just, it, it's a special kind of wood. The design, all that kind of stuff matters because it helps us to really um, create that, that sauce that you want. Because we're basically building a sauce now. Now that the pork's been fried, this is the sauce that the pork's going to sit in and cook in and um, get all deliciousness in. So we've got the the Trinity cooked down to where I want it to be. It's still got a little bit of stuff on the bottom, but as soon as I throw in the next couple items, that's all going to get cooked off the bottom anyway. So it's great. And I just want to, once again, thank um, Crescent City Cooks. Crescent City Cooks is the place that we learned to do this dish. We love it. Um, and it's also really phenomenal tomorrow morning over eggs as breakfast. I know I told I said mentioned that when we did um, the run a lot, but this is possibly, in my personal opinion, as even better over eggs than the run a lot once it's done. So it's phenomenal. I love it. Um, and the last thing I want to mention really quick is we're cooking this in one of our pans because we've got a flat stove top, electric stove, like stove top. Uh, it's even better if you can do this over actual gas with cast iron. Um, it just cooks up a little better that way. We don't have that option because of what we have in the house, so we make do. If you do have that option, I'm a little jealous, but, you know, more power to you. That's a good thing. So now that we've got the trinity and the celery, the green bell pepper, the onion, I'm going to start, I'm going to add in just, it's just a everyday can of diced tomatoes. Nothing really exciting here. Simple based can of diced tomatoes. Um, we buy these in bulk because we go through a lot of cans of diced tomatoes. So that's our little can of diced tomato. And, there's not any cooking that needs to happen with it. I just want to get it kind of integrated in with everything else. And I'm going to let the liquid from it kind of start to um, take care of the stuff that's still left on the bottom. So I'm just scraping it up. And what the really fun thing is you already start to see that it's starting to get a little bit more of... It thickens up a little. You start to get a little sauce actually getting formed. And like I said, I'm just integrating all this in together, getting it all mixed in so it's all nice and ready to go. Nothing too exciting. The next up, we start throwing in the herbs. So we've got dried herbs. It's Italian seasoning kind of blend. But the key with any kind of dried herbs is that you don't want to just throw dried herbs directly into the pot. You want to make sure that you put them in your palm and you, you grind them together in your palm because that's going to release the, the oils in the herbs that were trapped when they got dried. So I'm just going to take the, the dried herbs we have, just kind of grind them together to release those oils, then let them go into the pot. It's going to, once again, add more fragrance, add more flavor, make the depth of flavor even greater. Um, if you guys haven't caught on, this is the theme of today, is layering flavors to get deep, complex flavor. So I'm going to get those herbs mixed in here really nice. So that's ready to go. And then the last other, the next herb that are flavoring that I want to put in is the garlic cloves. And we, we just buy the big thing of chopped garlic. You can chop it yourself, but we go so, so much garlic. It's, this is so much easier. Um, or you could actually just pie globes and use the little garlic press that you can get from Pampered Chef as well. That's actually a great option when that's what we do when we run out of the big jars of garlic. Um, so I put the tomatoes in, I put the herbs in, now I'm going to throw in the garlic. And there's not a lot of cooking that you want to do. You definitely do not want to overcook the garlic. Um, if you overcook garlic, it gets bitter and it's just not a flavor you want. So I'm just going to... Get it in here. Make sure it hits the heat a little bit because it's releasing that fragrance. It's kind of activating the flavor through the heat. Uh, but it's not. I'm not heavily cooking the garlic. I just wanted to get a little bit of heat, just enough to to release its its flavor a little deeper. Get it going a little bit more. So 
I've got that going on. That's in here. Once all the vegetables are in and you're starting to cook down, you can actually take a little bit more flour that's been seasoned and throw it in. Um, you don't want to throw a whole lot in, but you want a little bit more because this is what's going to let you really thicken up the sauce. So this is kind of the key to this. The flour becomes the thickener of your sauce. So I'm just going to get that flour mixed in. And it's already got the seasoning from the Cajun seasoning. Uh, so I'm not throwing any more in. Um, depending on how you are with spicy versus not spicy food, um, Danielle doesn't love super hot food, so we don't put a whole. Oh, we don't overdo the spicing, and that's the tip of the day. The other tip of the day, one of the tips of the day. I've got a lot of tips of the day apparently. Uh, one of the tips is to make sure that you don't over season at the front end because you don't want to add too much heat at the front end, and then because as it cooks, it's gonna the the heat's gonna grow and develop. And if you put too much at the front end, it could end up being too spicy. It's really hard to take spice out. It's a whole lot easier to add a little bit more spice or heat or flavor like that at the end than it is to try to keep taking it out. You, you just, it, there's tricks, but it doesn't, it's not the same. You start to water down or, um, or diminish the entire complexity of the flavor if you have to try to remove spice through seasoning. I'm going to put just a dash in just because I want to show you guys what we're doing, but it's not much. Um, get that thrown in there a little bit. I'm looking at it and I want a little bit more flour, so I'm just throwing a little bit more flour. Not much. Just getting that intermingled. Um, simple, easy, nothing too complex. And when you see, when you look at the overhead view, you'll see that it's starting to become a nice, thick um, deliciousness. And I'll tip it up a little bit so you can kind of see it's got. It's all gotten that color. You can still see the tomatoes in there, the garlic's in there. It's all just mixing together, layering flavor on top of flavor, on top of flavor. This is the point. Um, so we're going to let that cook for just a second. And the next couple things I'm going to put in, and this is the base of the sauce. This is the, the beef broth. It's two cups of beef broth. We just buy the containers of it. Um, and it's just to, to create a thicker, like, just to create a sauce out of it. Because right now what you've got is some nice cooked down vegetables, but this gives you the liquid that lets it start to become a sauce. And that flour you've put in before um, is actually, and, and the reason I'm delaying putting the sauce in right now is because I'm letting that flour and the liquid from the tomatoes and the vegetables um, cook a little longer because it's creating that roux, that that thickening base. That when I put in the beef broth, it's gonna um, make it more of a sauce than a soup, and that's what you want. This is not supposed to be a soup; it's supposed to be a sauce. So I'm letting the this flour that I added just kind of intermingle, get let everything thicken up. It's a little harder to move the vegetables when I move them; they stay in the pan; they don't spread out like they used to. So I know it's kind of thick, and I can even hold it up now, and it doesn't slide down as much. Um, you can see it, it's a little slower in moving. It's just thickening up nicely. That's what I wanted. So I'm going to just give it one more second of that. And then we're going to move into the beef broth. After that, we're going to throw in some bay leaves. Um, bay leaves are great. They're just a nice addition. Just make sure you pull them out before you serve the dish because um, you don't want to eat bay leaves. But they are a fabulous uh, flavor enhancer and just one more layer of flavor. So we've gone from seasoned flour, really nice oil, the pork, then the Holy Trinity, then the tomatoes, then the herbs and the garlic. And so that's, you can see this layers of flavor just all coming together. So this has actually gotten nice and thick and I'm pretty happy with it. So I'm gonna just pour in the beef broth. And I'm just gonna pour, pour it all in once. You could take your time and mix it in and take, it's gonna take time to thicken up anyway. You don't need to worry about getting too concerned about it. So now I'm just mixing it in and it does look a little, soup ask, but that's because we haven't cooked it down yet. It's going to get its chance to cook down. Um, I also use this time to clean all of the goodness that's accumulated on the sides of the pot, whatever you've got, just to make sure get it get the bottom a nice, good, hearty scrape. Because all those bits that have kind of attached to the pot at the bottom or on the sides is just seasoning. Get it back in there. You don't want to lose that stuff. So I've got it in there now. Just give it a little stir, let it kind of sit. And this is where I would throw in the bay leaves, so I'm just going to throw in my bay leaves just to give them a chance to um, start bringing their flavor into the sauce as well, which is great. So we've got the, the beef broth, we've got the bay leaves, we're giving it a little bit of time. Um, there's a complexity, not just a flavor, but a smell, because I can smell the garlic, I can smell the seasoning from the Cajun seasoning, I can smell the beef broth, I can smell the vegetables. So you get that, that it just smells delicious. I don't know what else to tell you guys, it just smells really good and I'm hungry. Um, so I'm going to let this cook a little bit longer and then we're going to add in some of the last um, aspects of seasoning. 
And the two last things that we're going to throw in are a little bit of vinegar. We're just going to use rice wine vinegar. Um, it, it's got a little sweeter flavor to it. We just happen to like it. And then the other thing that we're going to throw in is the Worcestershire sauce. Um, this is a special Cajun power Worcestershire sauce. So this has that extra seasoning. It's got a little bit of the Cajun seasoning in it. So um, that's the reason why I went a little lighter on the other seasoning because I knew I was going to be adding more Cajun seasoning in towards the end. So I'm just, just continuing to add things slowly. Always make sure that we're going along. And as once I get everything added in, I'm going to just kind of check and see. Um, I'm going to grab a spoon and see how it tastes. That's when I'm going to think about if I need to add any more salt. Do I need to, is there anything else that's missing? And I also, but I won't throw all the salt I, in, I would need in because I know it needs time to cook and it still needs to cook down a little bit. So I want to give it some of that extra time for the flavors to enhance and to mingle in. Um, so first we're going to go ahead and just throw in, um, it's a tablespoon of the Worcestershire sauce. Um, I'm going to pull a Danielle and not measure and hopefully I get close. Um, we like this stuff, so if I go a little over, I don't think anyone in this household is going to cry. Um, so we got some good Worcestershire. You know what? There's a splash left. I'm just putting it all in. We've got a second bottle waiting. Okay. So that's in. Um, and that's one of those things that we can't find here, but it's worth getting the Cajun version of it. So we buy that um, through Amazon and on at cookingwithdanielle.com. We have links to it, so you can find out where in um, Amazon to get that. And then we've got the, the little bit of vinegar, and that's just a teaspoon, so I'm just going to do a smaller splash of this. One, two. There we go. Enough. And just kind of let that mix in as well. Um, so I'm going to let this kind of intermingle for a second, let it get do its thing for a few seconds. Um, and then now that I've got everything mixed in, I've got all the flavors combined, we've got the layers of flavors, that's what I'm going to go grab my spoon. I'm just going to see where it sits. It's hot. That one I know, but I also want to just kind of see where the flavors are, see if there's anything missing. Definitely taste the Worcestershire. Definitely taste the garlic. I can taste the um, all of the different um, seasonings that go with the Cajun seasoning. Uh, but it doesn't, it, there's... It, one of the things I've learned is that salt really gets the flavors to pop a little bit more. It feels like it's, for lack of any better phrasing, it seems a little flat. Um, and it's not because the seasonings aren't right. I just know that it needs a little bit extra salt just to get the seasonings. Because salt enhances flavor. Like pepper adds flavor, salt enhances flavor. So I'm not really changing the flavor of the dish when I add in the salt. I'm just helping all of those flavors pop a little bit more, come to the front a little bit more. Um, so I just, it just felt like it needed a little bit salt. I didn't throw a whole lot in, but now I'm just giving it another mix, letting it kind of get that salt cooked in, letting it do its job on releasing all those other flavors, and then we'll see what, how it tastes now. So I got another spoon here, do another spoon taste. It'll cool down a second because it's hot. So now it's, got, it's brighter. It's got a lot more flavor to it. It's got a lot more... Um, kick to it. So that little bit of salt at the end did make a world of difference uh, to me. And so we're going to just let it cook down for another couple seconds. I'm going to try one more flavor taste just to see if there's anything else I'm missing. Um, so we're going to do one more new clean spoon. And I'm not the flavor expert, so this spoon's just going to disappear off the screen for a minute. And then the master will let me know if it's still missing anything. We've got a request for a little bit more salt, um, but other than that, I think all the flavors are pretty even. So um, she's 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 got the palate. I uh, just like to cut things, so she she gives me the scales of prep, um, sous chef. But I just like to make this one; it's one of my favorite dishes. So you guys got me on camera today. Um, so I'm gonna let this cook down a little bit more as it cooks down and as it's still going. One of the keys here also is to take the pork and put it back into the um, sauce because whatever flour might still be on the pork, whatever that will also go in and in add to the increased flavor and help thicken the sauce up. Um, so we're going to just kind of do one more second of this. I'm going to turn the heat down a little bit. And we've got seasoning where it needs to be. So now I'm going to take all my pork and just throw it right back in. Um, there's not any 
secret to this. I'm literally just grabbing all the pork off my my waiting plate here and just throwing it all back in. You guys, uh, uh, if you when you see it in the final video, you'll see like there's little bits and pieces kind of on the pork that are going to get in there that's going to help thicken it up, add to the seasoning, add to the flavor. But remember, browning the pork at the beginning matters because this way, because you cook the pork right at the beginning, when I add it at the end, it doesn't have a you, – you're, you're not – overcooking the pork. The pork's got its flavor already put into it by the way you cooked it now. Now it's just kind of intermingling and it's soaking up the sauce instead of um, doing any kind of weird addition, um, changes to it. So let me just get the pork integrated. Get the pork all covered. So now I'm going to let this just simmer for a little bit so that all that seasoning cooks in and it continues to thicken up. And um, I'm going to bring in the expert to kind of wrap things up for you guys. Uh, but thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for enjoying this. Like I said, keep an eye out for the final video once I've been able to edit it out and um, put it all together. So, Hi, everybody. So I did do a little taste testing on this, and um, he did a pretty good job of getting the salt in there. But I'll let, tell you, the first time I tasted it, all I tasted was Worcestershire sauce. So the second time after he put a little bit more sauce or a little bit more um, salt in, it mellowed it out, and I could actually taste more of the Cajun seasoning rather than the Worcestershire sauce. So keep in mind when you're doing your, you should always taste things before you actually serve it because you want that taste to be on point. You want to, what you want to come out of that dish is what you want to taste. Can you grab the polenta out of the cabinet? Yes. So like I said before, we tend to put this over polenta, grits, rice, whatever you like. We use um, some polenta that we actually get at Trader Joe's. You can get this in another place, any grocery store. So the trick with polenta though, you need to slice it up in um, probably about half inch slices. And then you're gonna put it in a frying pan with a little bit of oil on the bottom. You're gonna cook it, you're gonna fry it basically until it comes almost translucent. That means it's done. I put two or three little slices of this and then put the sauce and the pork on top. If you do grits, then you just need to do it to the directions. You can put cheese in it. Havarti is great to put in grits. Cheddar is great to put in grits. You can make it with milk. If you're allergic to milk, make it with almond milk. There's lots of different things. And I also like to do it um, when I do my grits or I, if I make my rice um, from scratch, I like to do it with broth. You're already using um, beef broth in this. Make your grits with beef broth. It gives it a lot more flavor. Um, if you do rice from scratch, you can you make your rice with broth too. It'll actually just enhance more flavor. So I hope you guys enjoy this. Um, and I hope that you all get to have a little taste of New Orleans um, in your evening. And I hope that everyone's doing well. And we can't wait to go live again with you guys again soon. See you later.